we've got thousands of dollars to make an enormous gold to mine. So we need to let this high speed operation run for a little while. While that's gathering up value, I'm going to throw all my shards into the pot and smelt it into a new power bar. I'm also going to grind every gem that's not incredibly rare. I've loaded up all the resources we have for now just because I need to see the value of what we're dealing with. $1,273 for all of it, I'll take it. So that combined with our uh, other money gives us almost $3,000 to work with. So pretty sure that's mostly the shards left over in there. I think the shadow is about there. Good enough for me. And then time is money, so we're going to start a moneymaker going again immediately. And then we're going to go to town. Because I want to see what this ticket office is. That's only $320. If it can open up new stuff, we're going to take it. We, of course, will have to uh, build that, but given how cheap it is, I'm sure it won't be that bad to construct. Not unlike in real life, our goal is basically to simply go deeper. So the ticket office will go here. We just need some Claudium, Iron, and Hardstone. So we've still got some mining to do for sure. It's still easier than the other side. One thing I can do to speed up the process a little bit actually is add more of these so we can add more power to our drill and it will spit out stuff faster. And the faster we mine, the more energy shards we find anyway so we can continually power ourselves. My bucket placement may need some work. Now each one of these Hardstones also weighs 10. I think we need 800 to build what we're building, 400, so we need a lot of these. But to get bigger, better resources, we need to go down deeper. But we also need to get more expensive claims, so we need more money. While my machine is slowly producing resources, I'm going to be going down here and digging ever deeper to manually pull up some of the valuables. It turns out I can actually just weigh the whole thing and it will give me the value for the whole thing. 925 for everything in there currently. But then after pulling out another load of resources from the bottom, the value actually jumped up by a ton. So I'm not sure what we just found, but it must have been good. As evening's falling, my machine is broken down. And of course the wildly expensive tool bag. Then we can fix our thing and let it run forever. And I'm starting to get pretty deep down in my hole, so I'm really hoping that's going to be lots of higher value resources, so less digging for me. Yeah, this time we got a few pieces of gold. That one's worth $32 by itself. That one's worth a little more, so they're getting bigger as we get deeper. That's actually a decent sized chunk of gold. Now for my next bright idea, I was hoping to be able to utilize these two things. But now that I look at it, I think I'm better off to buy a magnet on a stick. As expensive as that is, it's probably worth it. And the drive to town gets a lot more fun each and every time I have to do it. $428 well spent, then we're back down to $1500 in cash. But now that I got the magnet on a stick, I can do a little bit more uh, with smelting and everything because it's not as much of a mess to pick everything up again. Like right now there's only, I believe, iron in here because everything else got filtered out. We can smelt that into a bar and then we can pick the gold up and drop it in there nice and easy. So iron into iron bar, we'll put the pot back on the ground. Uh, we can actually do multiple resources, I grab the other bucket as well. So once we get the shadow roughly lined up, that stuff goes in there. But I've got more gold to put in there, so I'm going to go like this and we brought our bar with us somehow, but that's okay. It should hopefully, um, that didn't work as well as I thought. We need to maximize profits though. The bar we have smelted so far is worth $609. I'm hoping that once we turn it into something different, it goes up in value again because it's really obviously quick to do that. So from 609 to 670, it went up a little bit. And the gold ore I have in here, the base value is 1,088. But then once I smelt it, it does actually go up by about 20%. So I should be doing this with all of the resources I get because that's just easy money. So that nice rare diamond we found last time as well, we're going to incorporate that plus all the gold into a single ring that's hopefully worth a lot. Uh, also, we're going to move our anvil too because that's just a lot of fun. I did actually find a few more diamonds as well, so that's a nice find. we got to find out which is the biggest of these because we can add the biggest one to our ring. 0.92 for $230. We're going to combine that with the gold as soon as we finish smelting the rest of the gold. With the amount of time it's taking to sort through this all and smelt it all, it might be quicker just to sell it as raw resources. The more time I have to spend sifting through these annoying little idiots, the less time I have to be digging deep underground. And let's face it, I'm at my best when I'm a mole. One diamond wedding ring, that's worth almost $2,000 all by itself, I accept. I'm really starting to think that raw resources selling is mostly going to be the way to go until I get a better uh, organization implementation in. So there's a big bucket of resources, there's a reason I bought as many buckets as I did to make this part easier. Don't worry, by the end of this video, we'll have a very functional uh, mine operation. The Clodium, we're going to separate though, because I just happened to notice that. That's too rare to just throw away like that. So we made yet another sword out of some iron. Let's go sell and hopefully make an absolute killing. And wouldn't you know, the price of uh, pokey things is up. So we should actually be able to sell this in a stock market for a little bit more than it's actually worth. $383 plus $668, so there's $1,000 just from those. That's a promising start. Hello, sir. Can I interest you in a bucket of garbage? So, three buckets of garbage plus a ring, 3500 Now we're making some money. 
combine that all together and we have a total of 6060. Now things are going to get expensive again because we need to start setting up some conveyors. We need some splitter conveyors right or left just so we can uh, start to distribute items where they need to go properly. Also a straight conveyor or two and also a raised conveyor. This is going to get very expensive very quickly. Probably one more splitter conveyor. I don't love the fact we have to buy all this but we do. But this will make my operation a lot more efficient uh, and will make a lot more money. We got $3,000 left. We might as well leave that there. We're also going to need a lot of pipes. Luckily, these are actually quite cheap. I have just got the achievement that I processed a thousand dirt in the harvesters, which is a good sign. That means they're still working away back at home base. All of that, only $704. Now I've just got to find a way to make this all work in something that makes sense. One of the things I never considered doing until now was dumping lava on the snow and it actually makes a hole. So I'm actually going to go like this for a minute and let that run all the way down. I'm not entirely sure why yet but I feel like I could use this to actually open up a bunch of ground without having to do much of anything at all. I wanted to see if there's anything else I could use over here that could help spread the lava around. It doesn't look like there is, so I'll just buy another very expensive tool bag and be on my way. The lava drip is still working its way down there. I can see it doing something down there. I'm also going to see what I could do with the basic shovel just digging downwards. Uh, as far as I can tell, there's no pickaxe or anything to quickly mine through the dirt, so we're going to utilize this strategy. This is going to work great because now at least I can get directly to the bottom and we can find out what kind of ore is down there and if this is worth our time. Okay, that is four scoops from as far down as I could possibly dig. So how big of a difference does that make? Well, one piece of gold worth $32. That is reasonably big. The problem is without a way to clear the snow, there's really like nothing I could do to actually get down there. And better off to utilize the setup we have now to just keep mining at this depth and build up a whole fortune there. So I'm going to change my setup a bit. I'm going to have the lava flowing into it there. It's going to mine from very slightly deeper, but it's going to produce materials here onto a conveyor. They're going to go up there, get fed into a mulcher, and I don't know, go that way. Really wish I had some kind of lava sprayer right now. I've also just remembered that before, you could potentially manipulate the dirt under the drill. So like I can scoop out hopefully the bad dirt up here and get some of the deep dirt. Don't really remember if that's how that works, but it's worth a try since I'm putting in the effort. My idea is slowly starting to take shape, but I realize I'm going to need more upwards conveyors, so I've got a long drive ahead of me. I'm procrastinating driving all the way over there, so for now I'm getting as much of this set up as I can. That way, also if I'm missing any parts, I should know before driving all the way there. Well, this is roughly what the layout's going to look like. We're going to have a few of the sorters dumping their respective materials off to the side. Something's going to run off the end, but we just need a few more of our missing components that I'm too lazy to go grab. I've also just realized I fed lava into the water system. I think I actually have something like this. This turns uh, other things into water. Also, I've taken uh, a bunch of my assorted crap because I don't feel like sorting through it. And that gave us another $1,700 just because I feel like I'm going to need some money. Huh? After a great deal of trial and error, I figured out how to produce water. Earlier, I did a double take on this guy because I wasn't sure what it was, but this is just ice that I put into my little bucket and spat back out. Not sure if it has any value by itself, but if I drop that in here, you hear the sound it makes? Now we got water and this will produce water, which will uh, make the conveyors go around. Every time I have to remake something, this whole operation just gets so much worse. We'll fine tune it and refine it later. For now, I just need it up and running so we can actually make some money again. Okay, I finally have the ambition to go and get my last conveyors and pipe pieces, hopefully that I need. Then we can get this set up and sit back and relax and let the profit roll in. Okay, all the way back, we're maybe going to go a little bit overboard, just so we don't ever have to come back here ever again. That's $2,000. I only have about $2,000 left, but I purchased 100 items from this store. Boy, do I feel like a winner. I uh, have $46 left. I realized I needed a more splitter conveyor things and I might as well buy them while I'm here. It's a fresh new day so we're going to start putting the pieces together and hopefully this actually works because we don't have any money to uh, spend on anything at all right now. Okay I think I'm finally sort of ready to see how well this actually works. Okay so that's going, that conveyor is going, that conveyor is going. So let's start the mining and mulching soon. I guess we gotta feed lava into that first though. And good news, rather fittingly I'm short of one single piece, an elbow pipe to go from there to there. We can do the straight one for now, but we're still going to need to go to the shop for one more that I don't know if I can afford. Luckily, I do leave enough of a mess lying around that I could probably actually get away with just selling this for whatever that's worth, and that should be enough to buy a cheap pipe. This would all be so much quicker and easier if I wasn't completely stupid. The sort of ground garbage, 171, that's probably more than enough to buy a single piece of pipe. $25 and a dream. Now everything should be working. 
The mulcher is going. The dirt producer is going. We'll turn the water on as well. Conveyor is going. And there we go. It seems to be working so far. So far, good. Things are actually happening and they're supposed to be in. And it's actually falling into the bucket. That one's into the bucket as well. Perfect. It's not going to mind the quickest yet, but this is a very scalable operation. And the best part is I can mostly just sit back and relax and watch this go for a while finally. I assume it's going to need a lot of water to keep this going though, so I'm going to have to keep it topped up over here for now. Which isn't the end of the world, but it's also not the funnest thing in the world. I'm actually curious if I could like feed this around into itself. Like split the water so the water pours right into itself and if it would top itself up. Is that too much cheese or would the game accept that? This thing runs out of water pretty quick, so we're going to have to stop the operation to find a better solution for the water problem. I'd like to think this is silly enough that it won't work, but you never know. So the water is going in there. That might not be working. I think that has to be ice, which is really annoying because it's going to take so much water to keep this operation going. <laughs> well, that was worth a try. I like the idea, but uh, we need to figure out a better solution. Well, for now, until I can dream of a better way to do this, I'm manually going to shovel ice into there. It's a means to an end. We'll make some money and we'll be all the better for it. Plus, even if the conveyor is not really moving for bits at a time, those are just stack up and they'll get mulched up anyway once they get to here. Okay, I do think I found a way to make this permanent. We just need to save up some money first. Because I realized that these little guys are the same as those little guys going along the conveyor belt that's currently stopped. So this is going to be a really, really complicated system by the time it's done, but it's going to be feeding ice into itself. So far we seem to be getting quite a bit of iron, but we're going to smelt everything we have because I want to try and get one that feeds into itself. So we need a bit of money. So for my knife and my gem ring, we have $741, which isn't a ton, but it's maybe enough to get me going for what I need right now. Luckily the lava drills are only 430. Okay, so in a perfect world I could somehow have that mining snow right there, dropping its snow bombs into there, and then we have an efficient system-ish going. So I just need an intake pipe and one bend. Okay, so let's feed this thing some snow. Hopefully this works. We're cheesing it quite a bit, but if it can start just mining that snow and producing us some uh, ice chunks, then we'll really be in business, finally. The moment of truth, it's not working. I think maybe it doesn't love that part of things. I'm going to try adjusting everything just a little bit because I'm pretty sure I can still make this work. So I've lowered things down a bit. I managed to trench this in. So this is sitting way down here. This is sitting at a hopefully good enough height where it will produce some snow for us. Now it's just a matter of setting it all up again. I think I've actually got it working. Uh, there's definitely some snow in there that's not supposed to be in there, but that's going to fill with water now, which means the conveyor will also run. Yep, good. Okay, so that needs to start going. There we go. Everything's working. This thing will put... Uh, produce endless water which will funnel that those two are running on their own yep this is perfect so while i'm at it i'm going to make a shard bar so i can uh add a little more power in maybe into the one that's producing water okay goo is melted that can go back in there we'll throw this over here into the thing while we have a slight disruption to our water production uh i just realized now i accidentally uh accelerated the conveyor but that's also fine if I'm feeling really ambitious, I can continue into my mole hole, going as far down as I can and grabbing some dirt, and I can just actually drop that straight onto the conveyor and it will sort it for me. That actually produces a much bigger chunk when I use the bucket. Probably because there's more resources, but yeah, that's going to add some much bigger pieces. That's what we need our machines to start producing. When's that big? And then we'll get bigger resources. That produced a diamond. I've been uh, manually feeding it for a little while, but I'm going to smelt another energy bar. That way I'm going to double energy bar the uh, drill and grinder. That way they hopefully produce bigger, better resources. Okay, I've been mining for what feels like forever, so I'm going to shut everything down for a second. And then we're going to take a look and see how many resources we've got. So a lot of iron comes out of the surface where we were digging. That's actually quite a bit. 152 worth $1,400. And the gold sitting on top of some iron, but that's uh, 100 pounds there, 1850 and then all this hardstone that we need to turn into bricks. Hopefully there's actually a lot of that. 94 so far, but I'm going to turn that into the bricks. Just need to borrow one of these. Then I can dump this whole thing in there and hopefully we get a few bricks spit out. That's good. Look at all the bricks. Now I've got to carry them somewhere. So I wisely brought the truck to me. We're going to throw a bunch of these here to the back where they're hopefully out of the way until we figure out what we really want to do with them. But we're probably overdue to smelt this uh, gold and other resources into something better also. We also found our first onyx, so that's probably actually worth a few dollars too. That's $137 for 0.55, so that's a good find. We'll make something out of that eventually. 
It's tempting to keep the iron to sell to the shop, but for that kind of money, we need to expand our operation. And then while I'm off to the shop, all you guys, please behave and don't do anything stupid while I'm gone. Our knife that we made is 2,000 plus the diamond ring, five grand for the two of them. That's lots. But you can never have too much of a good thing, and I've noticed we need lots of these. I didn't realize we we're limited to how many of these we could buy at a time. I was gonna buy more. The more of these we have, the more production we have, so we definitely need to unlock tier two. For now, I'll take another repair bag, maybe two. I'm also gonna get a saw so we cut bars in half, that way we can better distribute things. Gotta remember to pay for it. Naturally, while I was gone, many things broke down on me, but that's okay, we'll fix them up and then they're rolling again and still producing resources. I decided to buy the construction shop because it was really cheap and turns out it doesn't take much for resources either. I'm just kind of hoping that by doing this, uh, it unlocks something new that we could utilize or something that would help us melt ice or something. And it actually has a lot of stuff we could have used earlier. It said construction shop, so I thought it meant construction for like building things, not useful things. So I could have used that pickaxe like 40 million hours ago. There's also a dull ice pickaxe design that we can use for the master forge. That only, I think, takes 80 iron. So we're going to buy this stuff. And I'm going to stop by base and top up my iron. So we have an 84 pound bar. And then struggle to figure out exactly how this is supposed to work. You'd think that 80 iron placed presumably somewhere here would get the job done, but it doesn't. But the important thing is we now have a pickaxe, so when we want to uh, open up the ground, we could do it in a really big hurry. That means we can dig stuff all the way from the bottom. So to celebrate, let's make jewelry out of an emerald the size of our head. That's a regular size for reference. That's actually a good size gold bar, so we might have quite a ring on our hands. There it is in all its glory. The enormous gem gold ring is worth 3,000. I was hoping for a little more. 